your uh, uh, bulletin, you also have these New Hope notes. And here's the outline for this Sunday's uh, DVD presentation by John Ortberg. Again, just an absolutely fascinating presentation. And we'll show part five next Sunday. And uh, again, part five is all about talking about the Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But he spends a lot of time talking about Saturday in next week's message. And it's, again, just uh, fascinating. Uh, for all who come to our Christmas Eve worship celebrations, we'll be handing out this little booklet by John Ortberg, Who Is This Child? Been rereading this at night um, as I'm drifting off to, to sleep. He's got an opening chapter about Mary that's just uh, really, really uh, stimulating and th thought-provoking. And he's got something here about the, the, the child, of course, with uh, Jesus. And it's a nice short read, but it helps us to reflect on who Jesus is and how he just keeps being the center. He wants to be the center of our thinking and our thoughts. So let's uh, watch John Ortberg and I'll come back up and wrap it up after the end of his message. I want to uh, read from Acts chapter 2. Um, Again, this is right after the church begins in Jerusalem, and as life begins to happen, um, this group of community, this this small group of people that are gathering, um, they don't gather in a building like this at all. Um, Rome is still the uh, ruling uh, government authority. Um, there's still a lot of uh, evil happening in the world uh, all around them. But something starts to mark this group of people, and it's always marked the group of people that gathers in what is called the church. Again, as he made so vividly clear in the uh, presentation, we probably get it wrong as often as we get it right. Some of you here this morning um, really don't have much use for the church. You may not be a member of one. Um, you may not attend very often. And sometimes it's because you did attend at one time and you were around Christians and sometimes you got in real deep and that really threw you off. But where a church is getting it right, there's just something amazing about it. And as we in this year and going to 2013, and we're gonna be celebrating kind of 25 years of this group of people growing and serving in our community, in our area, maybe ask this question, what would our community and area be like? What would your life be like if New Hope didn't exist? If New Hope Christian School didn't exist? Well, uh, that's a pretty sobering question. It's a question that at times kind of haunts me. And again, I'm inside, and so I know some of the flaws. I know some of the flaws that um, are in me. And um, so I, I know some of the things, but yet, as I also am able to see what goes on from the inside, I cannot be more amazed and thankful to God for the ministries of New Hope. And it reflects these words that were written almost 2,000 years ago. So from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And I put this uh, little byline that we've uh, um, been using here at New Hope for a lot of these 25 years. God's kingdom is always warmly expanding. When we arrived 25 years ago, there were just a handful of people. And we just said, what would it look like if we started 
doing what it says here, to devoting ourselves to the apostles' teachings, devoting ourselves to the word of God. What would it look like if we would uh, come together and, and pray? What would it look like if we would uh, receive communion often as a, a community? What would it look like if we served the children of our community? What would it look like if we served the parents? What would it look like if we served? What would it look like? And over the years, we've seen the kingdom of God in this little local church just continue to expand. We, many of us continue to watch that church expand around our valley, around our state, around our nation, and around the world. And at the same time, again, just we're kind of maybe on the same page, as the church is doing its thing, there's still evil out there. And sometimes we get so frustrated with that evil, thinking that this evil, why it continues to exist. Why isn't God doing something about it? And he is. That's why you're here this morning. That's why God is warming your hearts. That's why God wants to warm your heart this Christmas. Not just with family traditions, not just with favorite foods, favorite beverages, exchanging gifts, being in a warm home, but he wants to change your heart with the wonder of who this Jesus is. For Jesus isn't a Jesus just for a couple of days. Jesus has been warming your heart for months now. And it might be that Jesus wants to take your heart and warm it to a whole nother place. Because again, many of you are more devoted to what's going to happen at noon today than to Jesus. And what happens at noon today looks really, really big in this day and in our culture. But you start thinking about the world as it is today. And there are billions of people that Jesus cares about that will never even hear about the existence of what happens at noon today. There are millions and millions and millions of people down through the ages that believed in this Jesus. One day in eternity, the focus will be on Jesus. And so many of the things that we think somehow we've just got to have this year, you'll never think about him again. Who is this Jesus that can warm our hearts in these moments, in moments to come tomorrow, in moments to come on Christmas Day as we move into 2013? Who is this Jesus that has prepared this community of believers to warm your hearts in these days? Long before you ever even knew this church existed, long before you ever even came into this church, years ago, God was at work so that you could hear about Jesus and your hearts be warmed. Jesus is the center of Christmas. May Jesus be the center of our hearts and warm our hearts and warm our thoughts to who he is and how he is gathering us together. Let's stand and pray. Jesus, there is a wonder when we come to this time of year that we can think about you as a little baby, the God in flesh incarnate coming as an innocent little baby 
and then that we can think in the very same breath and the very same thought that you became a man and you went to the cross and you died. You went to a tomb and you rose and you ascended. And Jesus, we believe that your word, as we center around your word, your word teaches that you are coming again. Even though it's been 2,000 years, even though sometimes the church gets it so wrong and the people of the church gets it so wrong, but Jesus, you are turning hearts, you're turning hearts, you're turning hearts, you're turning hearts. And so turn our hearts to a place where we can receive warmth. Warmth, not just for a few moments, but the promise of warmth for eternity. For there is no other source that exists on this world, in this world, that can be that kind of source of warmth. So Jesus, we ask these things in your name, and we pray that you will be with us as we celebrate you. And we ask Jesus that as we sing, as we gather, that you will be in the midst of us. Give us moments, give us loud moments, give us quiet moments, give us beautiful moments. Give us moments to know, Jesus, that you are Jesus. Turn our hearts. We ask that you turn our hearts as we continue to pray the prayer that you've given to us. And why don't we pray it? Is it on the screens today? Nope, not today. So hopefully you know it. Let's pray. Most of you do, but let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat>